Feisty, fearless, and fair. She's an Emmy-winning journalist from the White House to war zones, telling all sides of the story. This is the Rita Cosby Show. Lovely Rita, meet a maid. Nothing can come between us. When it gets dark, I tow your heart away. Breaking news. And tonight, it is a tale of two very different scenes. Inside at the Democratic National Convention, they are talking about Kamala Harris, talking about hope and change, even though they continue to take swipes at President Trump uh, and basically say that half of America uh, is a threat to democracy. And then on the other hand, outside of the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, massive protests tonight. Big anti-Israel protests where protesters are clashing with police, heavily armed police and riot gear. And also this comes after there were several bomb threats, even targeting hotels near the DNC. Also, a threatening email was being sent around, including anti-Semitic statements mentioning the Democratic National Convention. They just put another layer of fence around the Democratic National Convention area. And this comes as protesters have been repeatedly chanting vile things about Israel, vile things about America. And I'll tell you, one of the things that really, really deeply, deeply disgusts me on so many different, different levels is because when you see them out there and they are burning the American flag, they're burning the Israeli flag, they're saying blank this country, uh, blank America, blank Americans. I'm sitting there saying, what the heck are they doing in our country? I'm sorry. These people, they need to be investigated. They need to be arrested. And if they're not happy with being in America where they're burning the American flag, uh, many of them, I bet you, are here on visas. We should be deporting them in an instant. Why are we allowing this to continue? And at this hour, police are blocking stores and different areas because they're worried they're going to break into stores. They have already broken down fences and, again, burning flags and also getting into buildings and properties. I would call that trespassing. I would call that destruction of property. A few people have been arrested, but really a handful of people have been arrested. Why are we not throwing the books at these people? And why is the Democratic National Committee not saying, you know what, we need to disown these people and we need to condemn what they are doing? And not only are they being silent about so many of these things, they're actually in many ways encouraging it because last night President Joe Biden said there at the Democratic National Convention, these people have a point. He gave them an endorsement. Are you kidding me? These people not only don't like America, they don't like American values, they don't like our ally Israel, and these people will never, ever, ever be satisfied. Some of them are chanting, Killer Kamala, uh, like she is like the worst of the worst for her support from Israel. They're calling a full pullout of any U.S. support of Israel. That's not going to happen, even though Kamala Harris, quite frankly, has been so waffly on Israel and disgraceful, I think, in so many ways in Israel. Look what happened when Netanyahu came. She somehow wasn't available as the vice president to stand behind him and show support for our one of our greatest allies in the world that is literally under assault from every direction. Somehow she wasn't available for that. So she's already been waffly. They're already cutting into her uh, view, I guess, of Israel. And the fact that they're not condemning these people, are they so desperate for political votes that they don't want to alienate a handful of pro-Hamas voters in Michigan and Wisconsin and maybe in some of these other swing states? I mean, is it that what this is all about? I think so. Because why else? Unless what you you don't like? Uh, Is there something wrong? with condemning people who are burning the American flag and saying blank this country? 
I'm sorry. I find this so distasteful. And tonight I am so angry when I see these images. I love this country. I know all of you love and appreciate this country. And yet she, Kamala Harris, is sitting silent. And the Democrats inside are trying to pretend like everything's fine. No problem. You know, this waffling as the world is burning, and it's literally burning outside the Democratic National Convention tonight. 1 800 848 9222. 1 800 848 9222. And here's a little bit uh, from one of the scenes where one person tried to step up and say, Hey, please don't burn the American flag. And then they chased him down. Listen to this exchange. Uh, you just heard that, you know, blank this country, you know, burn it down. I, I mean, not just the flag. They're like, burn this country down, burn the flag down. We don't like this country. Well, then what are you doing in this country? I'm sorry. This is disgraceful. And it is also, I believe, been encouraged in so many ways by a very uh, waffly and very, in many ways, appeasing Democratic Party. And it really breaks my heart to see this. I never thought I'd see this in America. We've seen it in the streets. We've seen it in New York and some other scenes. And now here it is again today as they're sitting there inside talking about a, a party for everybody. And those people outside, they have a point. Pro-Hamas people who are burning the American flag have a point. I'm sorry, there is no point. Here is what President Joe Biden said yesterday, and he added fuel to that fire. Ben. The civilian suffering of the Palestinian people and finally, finally, finally deliver a ceasefire and end this war. Those those protesters out in the street, they have a point. A lot of innocent people are being killed. Those people outside have a point. He should have used his opportunity there when the whole world was watching him speak. It was his swan song. So it's not going to hurt him politically. He's not running again because his party pushed him out. So he should have used that moment and said, you know what? I'm going to speak as the American president, which he still is for the next few months. And he should have looked into the camera and said, do not burn the American flag. Do not disparage and try to beat and throw rocks and bottles at our great law enforcement. He should have said, don't you start protesting in the streets, condemning Israel, making Jewish students not feel safe on their own campuses or walking down the street. Do not light the flag on fire, appreciate this country or get the heck out. That would have been refreshing. That's what he should have said from day one if he was a real American president. And yet this president and the Kamala Harris, President Biden administration together have been so soft and so appeasing on these protesters from day one. They've allowed these cities to burn just like she allowed Minnesota, the Minnesota Freedom Fund, remember when she was supporting the bailout of those protesters and looters? She was like, oh, let's put some money in and let's help them. Let's help them get out. Let's help them. And some of them repeated crimes much more serious when they were bailed out by the funds that she supported and encouraged many people to donate. They raised $40 million, there was a report. They raised big, big money. 
according to some of the reports. So they must have bailed out a lot of people thanks to the endorsement of Kamala Harris. And now tonight, they are rioting and they are protesting in parts of Chicago, including in front of the Israeli consulate there, uh, burning Israel flags and burning American flags and saying this country stinks, this country's this, this country's that. What are you doing? Why are all these people not arrested and rounded up? Just like at Columbia University, there has been no recourse for the students that got behind those protests, including holding those janitors against their will at Hamilton Hall. No recourse whatsoever. And guess what? School's going to start again very soon. So you know we will see many, many, many more protests. And here is, you have to hear this. This is Alan Dershowitz, Professor Alan Dershowitz, Harvard Law School Professor Emeritus. And we talked earlier today when I asked him what he thought of Joe Biden's comments. Take a listen. To give legitimacy to these thugs, to these anti-Semitic people who are tearing down fences, and they tore down the fences before the speech, and they were saying uh, Hamas is right, uh, we are the resistance, To give them legitimacy, to put the imprimatur of the president of the United States on these thugs and what they're saying is an absolute disgrace. Absolute disgrace. 1-800-848-9222. 1-800-848-9222. Let's go to Fran. Uh, Fran, your thoughts about this. Wow, I got a million things I want to (laughs) say. First of all... Thank God for 770 WABC, you, Katz Matidis, everybody, because you guys are the voice of reason. You guys are the voice of the the real true voice. And it's without you. I mean, think about it. What what are we outnumbered? Ten to one news stations. But I got to make this point. The protesters, young kids. Yet, yet we are. It, yet it, we're it, number one, baby, and people are tuning oh, in because yeah. common sense wins. Go ahead, right, friend. Exactly, yep. exactly. But we got to get more people to listen. Unfortunately, but the, the, the whole world's got to listen. The kids now. Think about this: kids from five years old to say twenty-two which is the end of college. All of those kids in America, ninety percent of them that are in school, are indoctrinated. They're told. America's bad. White people are bad. Uh, and, and, and on and on. You know, George Washington, all these people are no good. They're indoctrinated. So the Democrats get 90 percent of all of those kids that they've indoctrinated. And the smart ones who fight it and make it through 10, 15 percent, we get the Republicans. The bottom line is they've poisoned people in school. They own all of, all the news stations. We can't get our word out. It, we do, but it, they just slam it. They Think about it. Look at what they've done to Donald Trump. They basically cut his legs off, cut his arms off. What is next? I mean, they're going to sentence this gentleman. They think about it. They said they are going to sentence him to jail. Right. They, they may. They, they, they may. Look, the president of the United States, they've convicted of a crime. They're doing everything they said they were going to do. And it's just it's just amazing. And now she's going to somehow steal the election. It's unbelievable. I can't believe where I'm living and there's really not a lot of solutions. And well, I hate to well, say you know, it, but- Well, you know what, Fran? Hang on, because yes, yes, I yes. do believe that good people speaking out and speaking up. And listen, that's why um, you got to get out and vote and you got to tell all your friends to get out and vote uh, all over hate, the country. I, I agree. I'm telling you, you because elections. I agree with, I agree with you. Election. But- and, I'm, <laughs> and, and hang on, because you look at the different. There are not. I I have covered many, many elections through my time, Fran, but boy, this time it feels like it is such two different worlds, two different, you know, ways of life, two different directions that this country can go in. And we already have seen how one direction right now is going, and we can recall how it was prior to that and the different values. And to me, it's a pretty crystal clear decision on which way to go. Um, and that's why it is so important for people to speak out and speak up. And uh, and listen, we have a big megaphone here, you know, on the Rita Cosby Show and WABC, of course, our base here, uh, which is hitting it out of the park. And I think it's because there are a lot of people, uh, Democrats, Republicans, independents, 
who just want common sense and they want values. This country stands for something great and this country deserves to be protected. Fran, thank you so much. And thank you for the great, great words. 1-800-DON'T-LOSE-HOPE, Fran. Don't lose hope. Get out and vote. 1-800-848-9222. The Rita Cosby Show. It's the Rita Cosby Show. Well, these protesters aren't letting anything get in their way. Uh, even a wall of police officers there in Chicago as they are protesting on the streets. And these people are definitely shaking up the convention. The first night, by the way, they got on the stage and they grabbed the microphone at the opening event, the sort of welcome party. They have continued to protest outside And some of the rhetoric has just been downright disgusting, and it has been downright un-American. 1-800-848-9222. 1-800-848-9222. I say it is time that they get tough on these protesters, that they stop mamsy pamsying around. Schools are going to go back in session Many schools are starting already, a lot of them right after Labor Day. That is right around the corner, and that is deeply troubling because when you think about them starting next week or two or three, imagine what's going to happen now at some of these other universities. And guess what? If from the White House they don't condemn it and the Democratic Party doesn't condemn it, well, guess what? Houston, we have a big problem in America one eight hundred eight four eight nine two two two. Let's go to Rabbi Eli. Go ahead, Rabbi. I have a complaint against. I have a complaint against the Jewish leaders because they're not speaking out. The Jewish organizations, the rabbis, the other community leaders, politicians, media people, philanthropists, donors. Where are they to be found? It's very, very, very little. Very yeah. little speaking out. You know what, Rabbi, you bring up a good point. A lot of them were speaking out, obviously, during these protests at schools. I haven't seen them, you're right, this week. They should be, now that we're seeing these images outside the Democratic National Convention. You're absolutely correct. Rita Cosby is on. The Rita Cosby Show presents Back the Blue. And this Back the Blue segment is sponsored by GoyaCares.com because you are a precious gift from God. Be sure to check out GoyaCares.com. They do so much to protect faith and family and to combat human trafficking, GoyaCares.com, by the great Bob Unanwe, who is head of Goya Foods. Check it out. Be sure uh, Bob and his team do so much great work. And this powerful story, everybody, coming from Carroll County, Georgia, where a sheriff's deputy was taken to a hospital after being shot Tuesday morning, tragically. Uh, This story is coming from after they were searching, doing a search warrant, they were executing and apparently medics transported the deputy to a local hospital. He has since been airlifted to Grady Memorial Hospital, which is a big one there in Atlanta. So please, please pray for this officer. He is currently in very critical condition. The sheriff's office identified the deputy as Inspector Taylor Bristow shortly before 2 o'clock. Now, according to the sheriff's office, he was in surgery at the time of their post. They said that he had been a deputy with the agency for about six years, and they were saying, from what they understand, it was a bullet that struck him in the face. 
Uh, the officers are asking for your prayers tonight. Boy, do they desperately, desperately need it. And you know how much we love our law enforcement here on the Rita Cosby Show. We're told that the incident happened just before 8.30 in the morning uh, today. And it happened just south of Carrollton. Law enforcement officers were carrying out a search warrant and the nature of that, uh, that has not been disclosed what the warrant was for. But suddenly they are told that a suspect opened fire. The suspected shooter is now dead also. And we are praying again for this officer to pull through. Uh, the department, they're saying our community has so much love for our law enforcement. It just kind of strikes at everybody. And people are saying they had tears in their eyes. Uh, hoping that this brave deputy will pull through. So everybody say a big prayer tonight for investigator Taylor Bristol, again said to be in very critical condition, Carroll County, Georgia. And of course, our thoughts and prayers are always with all the men and women in blue. We love and appreciate you so much here on the Rita Cosby Show. And everybody also... Be sure also to check out the great Tunnel to Towers Foundation. Uh, I am so honored to be a part of the big Tunnel to Towers Foundation walk run. It is coming up on Sunday, September 29th. And all of us here at Red Apple Audio Networks are encouraging our great loyal listeners, like all of you, to do whatever you can and donate to our individual teams. Help me raise the most money to be able to help our first responder heroes, our veterans, and also 9-11 victims. That's right. You can go to walk.ritacosbyonline.com, walk.ritacosbyonline.com, and click on my picture to donate. Please help me do whatever we can to help the amazing Tunnel to Towers Foundation walk run. Let's never forget America's heroes, and everything that they do for all of us to keep us safe. The Tunnel to Towers is near and dear to my heart. I love this organization. So again, please check out and do whatever you can. Encourage your friends to do the same. Go to walk.ritacosbyonline.com, walk.ritacosbyonline.com. Click on my picture and donate Uh Every dollar helps and makes an enormous difference. Thank you so, so much. And as we are talking, of course, about our law enforcement and just how dangerous the situation is, there's lots of officers right now on the streets of Chicago outside the Democratic National Convention. And here's a report from Fox 32 in Chicago talking about how these protesters are getting right out of hand. Uh, we want to come back live to you just so you can see <laughs> demonstrators have torn down fencing within our own with our own eyes we saw one guy within the last three minutes or so pull what appeared to be a sledgehammer out of his backpack um, to um, pull apart fencing here many demonstrators I'd, I'd estimate at least a hundred or so now have jumped fencing that was set up for the secured perimeter outside of the United Center now on the other side of the fencing that you can't see are at least a couple dozen um, police officers right now. We've seen Chicago police, we believe some out-of-state police, as well as Secret Secret Service agents. Demonstrators now appear to be taunting those those officers right now, but as of right now, you just hear a lot of screaming, you hear um, chants, but again, there are probably four or five fencing panes that have just been torn down outside of the secure perimeter near the United Center. And you just heard that action taking place again. And if you wonder what these people are all about, this interview with my buddy, Mike Tobin, who is a great reporter, he's based there in Chicago for Fox News. Uh, He interviewed one of the pro-Palestinian protesters and wait till you hear how candid this guy was and how disgusting this guy was. Not my buddy, Mike Tobin, but the protester he interviewed. Listen to this. You support Hamas? Every Palestinian supports Hamas, not just me. 
every Palestinian support. For October 7th? Who? October 7th. October 7th, yes, I do. What do, what do. What's wrong with October 7th? You tell me. What's wrong with October 7th? Well, I will tell you. Uh, 1,200 people were slaughtered, massacred. Women and children were brutalized. Women were raped and tortured. I, I mean... The fact that there's actually somebody who's on camera with a straight face saying, yeah, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with what happened on October 7th? How do you get to somebody's mind like that? How do you, first of all, get your mind so skewed? And how do you fix somebody's mind like that? I mean, that is absolutely incredible. Has that guy, like, ever spent time and understands What happened actually on October 7th? He should be forced to watch the videos of October 7th of what Hamas did to these Israelis over and over again. This is unbelievable. I want to play it again because that, to me, epitomizes what these people are. And the fact that the Democrats inside that convention hall, in many ways, are embracing them is disgusting. Listen to this. You support Hamas. Every Palestinian support Hamas, not just me. Every Palestinian support Hamas. Support October 7th. Who? October 7th. October 7th, yes, I do. What do, what do. What's wrong with October 7th? You tell me. That is disgusting, and that is absolutely stunning. 1-800-848-9222. 1-800-848-9222. Uh, let's go to Pete. Pete, uh, can you believe what you just heard from a protester who's there outside the Democratic National Convention? Lita, I've been praying for nothing bad to happen because they'll look to blame the Republicans. Hey, Steve, uh, Pete, you're off the mic a little bit, off the receiver. Get a little closer to the phone receiver. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yep, much better. Okay. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, I am outraged because... They're telling the Israelis that they can't protest. We are in the United States of America, and then we have rights to do. I am disgusted at the leaders in Congress that are Jewish that are just sitting back and let this happen. Now, I'm not Jewish, but my wife and my daughter are, and they were raised, uh, you know, Jewish. And I am outraged that nobody has spoken up. We're in America. You want to burn an American flag, you have a right to, if you're an American, not if you're from another country. You do not have a right. My father fought, your father fought, my father uh, was a a liberator. And I look back at his memory, if my father was alive today, he would be outraged. Please, get together, Jewish leaders, and have a set of cuyones. I mean, really. I am. This is disgusting. And it is. Protest, it is. And you, you know what's like interesting? There, there are a few uh, Democrats who have come out, by the way, too, and and supported obviously uh, the Jewish people and have condemned the protesters. But they've been pretty much silent. Um, a number of them of late, and some of them well, are in that convention hall right now. Uh, well, they're I mean, afraid. Yeah, they're, they're afraid. afraid. They're have afraid. Have you ever heard? Has anybody ever heard of a Jewish person going to a crowd and blowing themselves up? These people are, they, you know, any religion is a beautiful thing. Everybody should believe. I mean, I, especially after coming near death in the last two, three months, I actually died on the table with one of my operations. And I'm going to tell you something. Really, these people should realize that this isn't right. You know, Israel, Israel and, uh, and the Arabs are cousins they gotta unite this is horrible and we're also and pete we are also all americans you know like like uh, and again i go back a lot of these people here are uh on visas you know a lot of them you know yeah i would i would be checking the the status of them i would be finding out if they are here legally and if they're not i would get them out of the country because that issue is there, look, there, talk, you can talk about the issues, but to sit there and say, what's the problem with the rape and torture of young kids and women on October 7th? Like, what's the problem so casually? That to me is so shocking and it's so illuminating as to the mindset of some of these people that, uh, that unfortunately the Democrats are so desperate to get votes, they won't even condemn 
some of these uh, monsters. I mean, these are these are anti-American comments, not just anti-Israel. These are anti-humanity content, you know, comment. It is just beyond the pale. Pete, thank you so much. We love you, and I, I appreciate you and your family service and um, and your dedication to this great, great country. We need more great people like you. Let's go to Mike. Uh, Mike, your thoughts when you hear this guy, what this guy just said, this protester saying, you know, what's wrong with October 7th? And there he is outside the Democratic National Convention uh, trying to get inside. Your thoughts? That That's simply outrageous. And simple-minded answer from simple-minded people. Are you kidding me? They always focus, Rita, you know, January 6th, Donald Trump, October 7th, 1,200 people. Well, by the way, you're by the way, a lot of people inside, you're right, are bringing that up. In fact, Jamie Raskin was bringing that up and others were bringing it up. You're right. Um, But let's let's stay focused on what was going on outside. Uh, The fact that the fact that this guy is saying that outside. What does that say to you? And and to your point, you're right. They go after January 6th. And if you were near the Capitol on January 6th, mm-hmm. if you sneeze near the Capitol on January 6th, uh, it looks like right. you had a call from somebody, you know? And yet these people are burning the American flag, a lot of them without any sort of, uh, you know, any sort of uh, uh, yeah, retribution, any sort of any sort of accountability. Are you kidding me? Exactly, exactly right. Israeli protests are facing off now with police. You know, it's a killing field, Chicago. And what else is going to go on? You know, what else is going to happen? Burning the American flag? Get out. Get out of our great, once great country. Get out. And Barack Obama, the son of a preacher man, he's on deck, you know, the cleanup hitter. And there's Michelle now. I'm tuning in to Fox. Isn't this such a joke? And Barack, uh, Camilla Harris's husband just got up there. I saw it. husband happens to be be Jewish. I mean, hey, and you turn your back on Netanyahu? Right. I'll meet with him another time. Yeah, he should have said. He should have said. You're right, Mike. He should have said. I wondered about that, too. I mean, he should have said, uh, you know, uh, Kamala, uh, you need to be there standing behind Netanyahu. I mean, I wonder, did they have a discussion or did he think it was a good idea that she would rather go to a sorority event? Uh, it's worth a, it's worth. I mean, that's sadly what she did. It's it's worth a question. I'm curious, you know, because obviously uh, they have obviously it looks like a great relationship um, and you would think they talk a lot. I, I'd be curious. What what advice did he give her? Or did he not give her any advice? Uh, who knows? Either way, uh, she didn't show up. And that speaks volumes. And then she came out after that meeting and then she chastised also Netanyahu, remember, after they met. So to me, that also speaks volumes. Not only did she not go to that event and sit behind him, she also then condemned Israel afterwards, remember, scolded him to the point where Netanyahu was like, whoa, 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 uh, what are, where is that coming from? It seems like it was a little different discussion than they had in private, but publicly, she couldn't wait to scold him, and that is a lot of damage. And here we are with still five American hostages, and by the way, six, sadly, bodies of hostages, not Americans, but six bodies were found uh, just recently in one of the tunnels there in Gaza. So, I mean, we should be doing everything we can to put leverage on Hamas and Iran and to get all the hostages home, including the Americans. And that should be the discussion every single day. And I barely ever hear them talk about the hostages. And in fact, I think uh, Biden mentioned it briefly last night, and I was surprised because he barely ever talks about it. And that should be the conversation every night to me. Bring them home. 1-800-848-9222. We'll continue your calls, everybody, after the break here on The Rita Cosby Show. It's The Rita Cosby Show. This is The Rita Cosby Show. And a lot of hogwash being said inside the convention hall saying they're the unity party 
Uh, and Trump and anybody who supports Trump, well, they're a threat to democracy. So they're the unity if you like them. If you don't like them, uh, well, then I guess you're not going to have any unity. Meantime, outside, uh, sadly, we're hearing that there are a number of bomb threats um, that police really have their hands full, that a number of the hotels uh, tied to the Democratic National Convention, of course, people stay at a number of these things, uh, also threatening emails, and needless to say, all of these protests that have taken place in the last 48 hours or so are also really giving police a run for their money. And thank goodness uh, for the great Chicago PD. Um, I've seen them in action before at a number of different events. And boy, they have a lot of hard work to get, you know, almost every weekend there. Last weekend, there were 40 shootings and multiple deaths. That is sadly a typical weekend in Chicago. And yet this is where the Democratic National Convention is taking place with the protests and the crime. And I saw the education levels uh, reading. Uh, I think it's 25 percent of them are at grade level uh, in uh, Chicago. I mean, that is heartbreaking. Twenty five percent. So it's not helping the educational system there. It's interesting. They pick Chicago. Uh, I'm not sure why uh, that should be the place that's sort of a beacon, if anything, uh, that only highlights a lot of the pitfalls and issues that need to be fixed in this country in a big, big way. 1-800-848-9222. Let's go to Susan. Susan, your thoughts about all this? Well, I just want to say my birthplace was Chicago. I was born in Ravenswood Hospital across from Wrigley Field. So, yeah, so you Uh, know the scene. So now when you see all these pictures taking place of the protests, what are you thinking? Well, I I want to go a different little way because uh, the most concerning thing, and you have been so spot on and beautiful um, in your reporting with um, Andrew McCarthy and John Q., that this is a real thing that we as um, Americans that listen and are aware that is a real possibility. They are saying they are legal experts. The President Trump may be jailed um, in the very near future. And the rest of us, even if he's not, let's hope for the best, prepare for the worst, be in action every day. Go to early vote action with Scott Pressler. Go on protect the vote. These are things we can do from our homes on our phones. No, they you're you're. And by the us. way, and Susan, I'm glad you brought up um, that because you're right, John. You and Andy McCarthy, uh, both really highly regarded legal scholars, have said. That they say they just believe Judge Marshawn is so political, they think he should have recused himself from the case because, remember, his daughter uh, was doing things, you know, was doing some publicity and social media and stuff for Kamala. And they do worry that he could actually be sentenced by this judge next month. That is stunning.